textbook says there are mutations, and they are the original source of variation in populations. I agree, mutations happen, no question. But mutations do not produce any evolution. Mutations scrambling up are scrambling up existing genetic code. They're not making anything new. Here's a five-legged bull. That's a mutant. There's no new information added. He already had the information on how to make a leg. It just made one in the wrong place, that's all. It's not new information, it is scrambled information. Here's a short-legged sheep. Again, no new information. And by the way, that's not beneficial. He's the first one the wolf is going to catch. Right? Oh, boys, go. Here comes the wolf. Brrr. Oh, Herman didn't make it. Mm. There's a two-headed lamb. That's a mutant. It's not beneficial. Two-headed turtle. That's a mutant. Not ninja, but it's mutant. Okay. Now, he's going to freeze first winter because nobody makes a double-neck turtleneck sweater. He's just not going to make it. Now, scrambling up the letters of the word Christmas will get you all sorts of different words, but it will never get you Xerox, zebra, or queen. The letters aren't available. This textbook shows the kids a four-wing fly, which, by the way, cannot fly. And it says, boys and girls, normal fruit flies have two wings. This mutant has four. This rare mutation, like most mutations, is harmful. And then it says, beneficial mutations are the raw material for natural selection. <laughs> now, hold on a minute. Why don't they show us an example of a beneficial mutation? Why did they tell us about the good ones and not show us a picture of a good one? You know why they didn't show a picture of a good mutation? Because nobody's ever seen one. There's never been one beneficial mutation. I, was, I said that in a debate one time, and this atheist said, Hovind, you're lying. He said, I can name a beneficial mutation right now. He said, people in Africa <clears throat> that get sickle cell anemia are less likely to get malaria. I said, that's brilliant, sir. That's like saying if you cut off your legs, you can't get athlete's foot. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both negative, okay? But some of these scientists have the ability to make amazing observations and still come to the wrong conclusion. One day, a bunch of scientists were going to see how far a frog could jump. They put their big old frog down there and said, jump, frog, jump. That frog jumped 80 inches. They brought the frog back, cut off one leg. It said, jump, frog, jump. He only jumped 70. They brought him back, cut off another leg. It said, jump, frog, jump. He went 60. They brought him back, cut off another leg. It said, jump, frog, jump. He jumped 50 inches. They brought the frog back, cut off his last leg, and said, jump, frog, jump. You know, they expected he might go maybe, you know, 40, based on the data. Actual jump was zero. The frog didn't move. They yelled louder, jump, frog. The frog never moved. The scientists were baffled. They tried the experiment again. Uh, new frog. Got the same results every time. So the brilliant scientists put their data together and said, you know what, folks, the frog jumped less as the legs were removed. Hey, that's a good observation. They got it right on the head. And they said, so we must conclude that a frog with no legs goes deaf. <laughs> Bad conclusion. It's possible to have a good observation and still come to the wrong conclusion, you know. That's what they did with the fruit flies. They put them flies in the laboratory. They nuked them, microwaved them, x-rayed them. They did all kinds of mean things to those flies, and they got some weird-looking baby flies. They got flies with curled wings. They fly around, bzz, 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 couldn't go anywhere. They got flies with no wings at all. Hmm? What do you call that? A crawl or a walk? Can't fly. They raised all these mutated flies in the laboratory and said, you know what, folks, fruit flies refuse to become anything but fruit flies. Well, duh. So they said, all mutations produce flies that were inferior to the original fly. Good observation. They said, so we must conclude that flies have evolved as far as they can go. Oh, bad conclusion. You know, maybe you could conclude that God made them right to begin with, and all you're doing is messing them up in your laboratory. Mm -hmm. They were doing fine until you guys got a hold of them. Yeah. And they say, evolution's as fit as ever. Yep, fruit flies in the north have wings 4% larger than flies in the south. Well, that proves something to somebody somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> but it's still a fly, okay?